Yes! Okay, we're on part two of electrolysis and this one is about aqueous solutions. Now, if you've watched the first video, this should be a little bit of a recap for you. Uh, but what we said is you can dissolve ionic compounds in water. And when you dissolve them in water, what happens is those ionic bonds uh, break down and your ions are free to move. So like that over there, right? You can see that they're free and they're free moving there. But, but, but we need to look at this in slightly more detail. Now, when you put this in water, yes, they break down, which is good. So you've got these, you know, your Na pluses and Cl minuses, but you need to consider this, that water also forms ions, okay? So this is super, super important. So you've got your water, which is H2O, but those can break down into H plus ions and OH minus ions. So also in here, you will have H pluses and OH minuses floating around, okay? So H plus and OH minus. So that adds a little bit of um, confusion to the mix there. Now let's check this out. Let's say we've got sodium chloride again. Now this one's a required practical, so you need to listen up real closely for this one. You got your sodium chloride, you add it to water, so you dissolve it, you're doing a little bit of stirring. What happens? Well, it's gonna dissolve, which is good news. And if it dissolves, then we get sodium ions, so Na pluses, we get Cl minuses, and now remember, you're gonna get ions as well from the water because the water can split into ions. So this is the situation we have. So I've color coded this as well for you. You can see you've got your Na pluses there. They're, those are in red over there. You've got your Cl minuses in blue, but also in solution, you've got these H pluses. There you go, those are in green and you've got these OH minuses that are in yellow, okay? So what can we see is gonna happen? Well, when we looked at the molten compounds, there was only one thing going to each electrode. But here, there's gonna be two things going to each electrode because the sodium is gonna be attracted to the negative electrode, but so will the H plus ions. So those are also attracted. So we've gotta got be able to tell what's actually happening. And if you look across the other side, you've got your Cl minuses, which are attracted to the positive electrode there, but you've also got those OH minuses too. So again, what's gonna happen? We need to look at this a bit more closely. So. We've got these two things traveling to the negative electrode. That's what we're gonna look at first. You've got your Na pluses and your H plus ions. Okay, now I've put out the reactivity series here as well, because this is going to help you. So you must remember this, right? Um, I'm just gonna highlight sodium. So sodium's in there, that's quite near the top. So there it is. And then you've also got H plus ions, which are hydrogen ions. So I'll highlight hydrogen as well, which is quite a way further downwards. Now let's check this out down here. This is gonna help us to determine what's reacting or what is uh, discharging rather. The species that is lower in the reactivity series will lose its charge at the cathode. So there it is. Now, we can see from our reactivity series that the one that is lower in the reactivity series is hydrogen or the hydrogen ions, okay? So those are the ones that are going to go to the electrode and discharge. So we've got H plus, and what are they gonna turn into? Well, hydrogen as an element is diatomic. So it's gonna form H2, and that's a gas. Uh, at the moment, these H pluses are aqueous because they're in solution. Now, we've got that problem again, where there's only one H over here, but two H's over here. So what do we need to do? We need to go and add a big two in front of this, because you need two of these H's to form these two H's over here. And now we need to look at the charges. So these here, these are hydrogen ions. They've got two, uh, they've got a plus charge and there's two of them. Um, so each of these need one more electron to become neutral. So what do we need in total? We need two electrons to be added. And now remember, if you are unsure, then what you should do is check the charges on each side of your equation. So let's do that now real quickly. You've got that there. You've got two pluses from the hydrogen ions and you've got two minuses from your electrons. And that is zero. And then you go across to the other side. Now on the other side here, you've just got hydrogen, H2, and I don't even see any charges there. So it's neutral. And this is good because it's balanced in terms of charge. You've got zero on the left there, zero on the right as well. So this is a good equation. We're happy with that. Now, those there, they're gaining electrons. So what is it called again? It's called reduction, okay? Reduction is gain. Remember oil rig, you've heard it a few times. So that is what's going on at the negative electrode. 
But what is going on at the positive electrode now? So your anode. Well, we've got Cl minus attracted to there, and we've got your OH minus. That's attracted to there too. But then how do you tell which one's going to react again? Now, I've written out this here to help us. So the order in which they discharge um, is this. The halogens will discharge first, then the OH minuses, and then any other negative ions that happen to be in there. So you can see that we've got halogens in here. We've got Cl minuses, right? So that is right at the top. So that is the one that's going to discharge. So we're going to have Cl minuses arriving at that electrode. And that's again aqueous. And then what's going to happen is it's going to turn into Cl2, which is gaseous. And so again, we've got Cl2 on the right, but only a Cl on the left there. So we need two in front of that. So we've got two Cls, two Cls. Those are all good. And now we need to check out our charges. So we've got chloride ions here. We've got two of them. Chloride ions carry a negative charge, meaning they've got one electron too many. So in order to become neutral, they need to get rid of one electron each. So we need to have two electrons on the right-hand side there to show that they are losing two electrons. You could do what again? Check the charges on both sides. So we'll do that real quickly. The charges here on the left, you've got two minuses. And then let's go across to the other side. Let's just highlight that there. And you've got the Cl2, which has no charge. But then you've got two electrons, which are two minuses. So you've got two minus on the right, two minus on the left. Again, those are balanced. So this is great. The Cl minuses are losing electrons. So that is oxidation. Okay, so oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. Brilliant. So like we said, that Cl minus is going there. The Cl minus is going there. And those are reacting. And on the other side, uh, we said H pluses are reacting, right? So what's happening is, well, the H pluses are going to disappear from your solution. So they're gone. And the same with your chloride ions. These are going to go as well. So can you see what's kind of left behind? You've got these Na pluses and OH minuses left in there. So let's check this out. Overall, what have we got? Well, we started with this NaCl and we mixed it with some water. And we just said that the Cl minuses, they disappear. And the reason they did is because they formed Cl2 gas. So I'm going to put that there, Cl2. The hydrogen ions, so the H plus ions, they disappeared too because they made hydrogen gas. So that's H2. And so what's left behind is, well, this here. You've got your Na pluses and OH minuses. And hopefully you can see there that that there is sodium hydroxide. Okay, and that there is super, super alkaline. Um, so let's just pop this in here. We've got NaOH as well. And so is that balanced? We should do a quick check. Is it all balanced? Mm, it's not looking like it's balanced. So I think we need to do a bit of work here. So let's go with maybe two over there because you've got your CLs. And then we go two over here. So what does that give me? We've got two chlorines. We've got two sodiums. This is good. Um, we've got uh, two hydrogens here. Two hydrogens here but we've got two here so i think we need a big two in front of this one and then it's all balanced so there's our balanced equation right we've got nacl and water and it forms chlorine gas which i think we discussed in the last video is a green gas so you'll see this green gas being uh bubbling off the surface and you've got hydrogen gas which is a clear gas so you'll see some bubbles but they're not going to be colored okay uh so you'll see that being given off and then left behind is this you've got your sodium hydroxide solution uh, which is super, super alkaline. Obviously, if you take a bit of pH indicator, pop it in there, it will show you that that's very, very alkaline. Or you can take a pH probe, dip it in, and it's going to show you pH of like 14. Okay? Great stuff. So there it is. There's our overall equation for you. And that's all done. Super. We'll do one more example. Let's look at copper sulfate. So here it is. Copper sulfate, dissolve it in water again. Get stirring. You dissolve it. What's going to happen? It's going to turn into ions. You've got Cu2 plus ions. So those are copper ions. And you've got sulfate ions. That's SO42 minus. Where did these guys come from again? They came from water. So water breaks into ions as well, H pluses and OH minuses. So that's the situation we've got. We've got all of those ions mixed up into there. What's going on? Well, let's just have a look at this. We've got Cu2 plus being attracted to that negative electrode. And so is the H pluses. So again, two things going to that electrode. On the other side, you've got OH minuses and SO4 two minuses being attracted to that electrode. So again, two things being attracted there. 
how do we tell what's going to happen at each one though? Again, we go back to the reactivity series to tell what's happening at the negative electrode. So let's get highlighting. We have copper, so Cu2 plus ions, and we've got hydrogen. Okay, so not much of a difference between the two, but remember what we said, it's always the one that is lower in the reactivity series that's going to go to the electrode and discharge. So that's going to be the copper on this occasion. So we'll have Cu2 plus ions, those are aqueous, and that there is going to turn into copper, so solid, because um, it's a metal, it just turns into Cu, um, so like that there. Now, Cu2+, plus, what does that mean? That 2 plus means it's lacking two electrons, and in order to become neutral, uh, it's got to gain two electrons. So what you've got to do is pop in plus two E minuses. And remember, there's that tip again that you could check the charges both sides to make sure that equation is correct. Because that Cu2 plus is gaining two electrons, what is that called again? It's called reduction. So you've got a reduction reaction going on here. Now we go across to the other side. And what's happening here? You've got SO4 2 minus attracted to there. And you've also got OH minus attracted to there. And now here is that little list to help you. You've got halogens first that are going to discharge. Then if there are no halogens, it will be the OH minuses next. And if there are no OH minuses, then any other negative ions. But what we can see in here is, well, there's no halogens because there's no CLs, there's no bromines, there's no iodines, there's nothing in group number seven. However, we do have OH minus ions. So those are going to discharge at the electrode. But this one's a bit of a tricky equation, right? So you've got to maybe jot this one down and maybe learn it, okay? Because it's a bit tricky uh, to just be able to write out. So here it is. You'll have four OH minuses, uh, those are aqueous. And what it does, it turns into a bit of oxygen gas and some water and four electrons. So that there is going to be um, your equation for what's going on at your anode. You've got water and oxygen being formed. So you're going to see a bit of gas again, obviously, and water is a liquid. This is losing electrons. So this is an oxidation reaction. Okay, so let's look at what's happening again one more time. We've got these copper ions that are being attracted to that negative electrode. Um, and what do they do when they get there is they discharge to form copper. Now, what happens is when they discharge and form copper, they end up coating or forming a little deposit around that negative electrode. So you're gonna see some copper deposits forming around that one there. Um, on the other side, remember we said we had OH minuses going to that electrode and discharging there. And that formed oxygen gas. So what you're going to see, well, you're going to see some bubbles of oxygen gas being given off over there. So you see bubbles of colorless gas. So those as well are gone. So what's left behind, you've got uh, a little bit of H pluses and uh, SO4 2 minuses this time. Perfect recipe for sulfuric acid. Awesome. Okay, so there it is. That was the electrolysis of um, copper sulfate. What happened is we started with some copper sulfate. We mixed it with some water. And what happened? Well, we got some copper, didn't we? So we got some copper. And we got a little bit of oxygen in there as well. We got a bit of water. So we've got a few different things here. And then we've got also <coughs> a few different ions as well that we mentioned there at the end. We've got some H pluses and SO42 minuses. As I said, don't really play around with a solution like that. It's quite acidic, quite harmful. Okay. So there we go. I'll pop that half equation down again because that's really, really important. It's important that you remember that there. So I'll highlight that now. You probably want to learn that one for sure. So there it is. And that was the half equation for what's going on at the other electrode there. That one's a fair bit easier to learn. Okay, great. So thanks for watching. That there was part two of electrolysis, um, looking at aqueous solutions. And now we've got to go into one more part, which is to do with the electrolysis of aluminium oxide. So to get aluminium. So uh, hopefully I'll catch you there.